without further ado, Ephraim Elizabeth King. Poetry. <laughs> Who here can give me a concise definition? Anybody? 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 Poetry? Anybody? Anybody? I didn't think so. <laughs> we no longer care for poets, do we? <laughs> we certainly don't teach it. As a matter of fact, these days it's safe to say where poetry is concerned, at least both American poetry, both American poets. <laughs> we are ignorant of it, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> now, who might stand before you and yell these things? Well, my name is Ephraim Elizabeth King, and I'm a poet. Winner of the 2011 Yale Younger Series of Poets Award. You'd know why that was important if you cared for poets, but you don't, not your fault. <laughs> Suffice to say, every young poet in America wishes to win this award because it says you are a natural, you are there, you are a finished product, you are it. And it puts you on a level with Louise Gluck, Noah Shutt, Ellen Bryant Voigt, Adrian Rich. Very prestigious. Yes. <laughs> I publish my work in some of the finest poetry journals we have, the Paris Review, Callaloo. The Agni Review. You'd know these names if you knew to care, but you, 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 all of you just shit on the very concept of modern American poets and modern American poetry. <laughs> I'm the recipient of a creative grant. It allows me to write, study, meditate, anything I want to do, anywhere I'm, specifically at the artistic retreat Yado in Saratoga Springs, New York. Such prestige. Such honor. So, how? The publishing, the accolades, the awards. Why me when so many others struggle and fail? <laughs> Let us light the wick on that stick of dynamite right after college. When I, Ephraim Elizabeth King, believe it or not, went through a horrible, horrible, horrible breakup. And then I wrote about it. Risky? Yes. <laughs> Lena Loves Glacier Water is my chapbook of poems. It was my first publication. It was called Cathartic, Catapulting, and I was like into a young Seamus Heaney. Let my name be whispered in the vaunted place behind his shadow. Prestige. <laughs> but that was it. These days, I am, I am, I am a professor teaching uh, the writing of poetry to young students at Dartmouth College, I believe, very selective. <laughs> Hanover, New Hampshire. <laughs> I look at all of you, and I can tell that not a single one of you, not nary one of you, <laughs> knew that the writing of poetry could be taught or mentored, because, as I said, you scound boogers, Greet the gateway of every day like the great American show pony with your broad muscles and your big American neck muscle fraxing and a gleaming as your head's thrown to the sky and you amble and you gamble and you ramble and you jamble and you strophe and strophe and anti-strophe. All about the stable yard. Thinking of one thing, and that's sunshine and oats! <laughs> and what you do when you come across poetry, you sidle up to it, don't you? Yes. <laughs> and you stand over it and look down upon it, don't you? Yes. And then you grab your big, hard-working American bowels and spread them wide and empty your fecund bowels upon it all over the entire canon of modern American poetry and poets. No! 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 You must not do that! <laughs> Myself and Ellen Bryant Voigt 
and Yusef Komunyaka <laughs> must teach. Because again, you scalpers don't have any ounce of caring in your body for modern American poets and modern American poetry. So we need day jobs, much like the vaunted uh, American <laughs> actor waits tables. We're like one aspiring stand-up comedian in my college days worked the student lounge as a student cashier. Oh, she taunted me with her translations from my text on the Roman conquests in Switzerland every day when I came to pay for my lunch. I was struggling mightily with the class. Everyone knew it. <laughs> Necrotic language Latin. <laughs> My blood was in the seawater, and as she was genetically 200% shark, she could taste it. <laughs> I realize this is a diatribe and a side note, but even then, a frosty, frosty, frosty fucking bitch. No names. Aisha Tyler. <laughs> I have a new book out today, Song of the Barrio Tiger, on the Echo Press. If you come across it in a local bookstore, purchase the fucking thing. Jesus Christ. Come on, buy a book! <laughs> Echo Press is one of those invigorating, inventive publishers of modern American poetry that we have today. But you wouldn't know that. You never memorize a poem a week as a lad, just like I did, under the threat of a beating from the buckle side of a belt. And you don't read a new book of poetry cover to cover on Sunday afternoons, as I still do. But tonight, you will reverse course. Trust me, you will reverse course. Because you're going to hear from the younger poets of today. You're going to hear from me, Ephraim Elizabeth King. You're going to find out what I do, what I have going on, who I run with, who I talk to, who I drink with, who I trust, who I confide in, and who I fuck. <laughs> it is my hope that by seeing me in person and, and, and hearing my voice, you will begin to understand and know what it is I do as a poet. But first, a selection from my chapbook of films, Lane Loves Glacial Water. And I honestly hope that you enjoy the view enough to lean in, possibly crawl through this open window hungry for more detail. Uh, as I mentioned, Lane Loves Glacial Water is about a breakup. People ask me all the time, they say, well, what happened? I have to say, I don't know. And they say, well, yeah, but baby, you were in a relationship and she split. Why? And I have to say, only it was because, you know, we have our dreams, and when I was growing up, all I ever wanted to be was an artist and a poet. And all she wanted to be, when she grew up, was a human being, and the two are not compatible. <laughs> <laughs> so this first song is for Lena, and it's called The Trouble with New Year's. <laughs> Near the end of a New Year's party, I provide percussion. <laughs> Surprise and repetition. I slam the door on this year. I trick a friend, I draw her in to a hallway closet, whip the door shut, leaving her only echoes, black and deep. Outside, I lean, parcel of firecrackers in my grip. Also matches. I pulled this trick once before on my little cousins, some babysitter. Whiff of powder, red papers. My fingers peeling the wrapper off a web of black cats. The fuse is lit, the pack is flung in, and there is hissing. Again, I shut the door, and swiftly, playful pressure against pleading, a leaden lid over top, all the cracking and blasting, the wick f -f 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 firing its wet orange, sick voltaic pink, muted yellow, fizz, ash, and lemon pop. The air outside tasting like nothing that is real. There is no way out for this future girlfriend. No way from fast smoke from cloud closing upon cloud. Sulfurous, vaporous snakes until my hand on cool brass, I twist and pull the door back laughing and laughing some more. <laughs> the end of any year smells of hairbreadth scapes, singed moments softly ringing, cups in the sink sliding, a cycling glass tone, subtly sung, singing, nothing. <laughs> this future girlfriend tricked, trapped, flung from my concussive charm, will land, and suddenly, clean air, relief. In a short time, she'll grow once more free of suspicion, and she will trust me. But I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Sometime. I who will once more whip the door and lean on it. I who peel crisp red skins from black cats and be lighting them shits and be tossing them shits in. Yeah. That poem mentions my cousins. I come from a large family. I grew up in New York City, but my family is majority of them from the South. So we have large reunions. My grandfather will take a steel drum, cut it in half, make 
eight, nine, ten grills because every person likes different things. Goat, <laughs> chicken, meat, etc., 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 raccoon, etc., squirrel, you know. <laughs> Amongst my family, for some reason, I have, I am known to have an affinity for young people. So when the adults gather at their tables in the den or at the couches and open their bottles of Otsi Sponti and start sharing stories and tales and gossip, I am stuck with my cousins and my nephews and my nieces. On one such occasion, my cousin Ella, from Memphis, Tennessee, Shelby County, came to me, she's 11 years old, and said, I wonder if you would listen to something that I've written. I have a question for the singer Joss Stone, and I phrased it in the form of a letter. <laughs> this next poem is the impact of me hearing that letter as it was written by an 11 year old from Memphis, Tennessee, Shelby County. It's entitled My Cousin Ella's Question for Joss Stone. <laughs> Joss Stone, does you turn it off, then turn it tone again? Like use a. Like use a, like use a strangle Christmas lights, <laughs> or is you someplace right now, being soulful, you know, soulful, just like um, just like, like um, being soulful, that's um, that's just, that's how you all is. is. <laughs> With your indulgence, I'd move on to poems uh, from um, uh, Song of the Tiger. And I, when I moved to the East Coast and West Coast, I took a circle of my activity and put it on a map of Los Angeles and hit dead center and only looked for apartments on those two streets. So I ended up in an apartment next to the Director's Guild. But I found my activity taking me further east, further east, further east, further east, till I moved to Boyle Heights. And there I made a friend named Francisco. Francisco's the type of friend that if you have him, he says things you do not want to forget. Even if you could forget them, you should not forget them because they are ways to live life. So this next poem from Songs of the Bowery Tiger is in fact called Francisco Says. And there are three small pieces in it, each one entitled Francisco Says. The number one, two, and three. So Francisco Says number one. Francisco says, Ephraim, last night I figured out the key to life. The key to life, if you wish to know Ephraim, I will tell it to you. Francisco says, this is the key to life. The key to life, Ephraim, is humorous anecdotes. Francisco says, that's what it is. What it is that it all comes down to is humorous anecdotes. Francisco says, I'm reasonable. I'm a trustworthy person. You know this about me. Ephraim, you show me a man who has no humorous anecdotes, and I will show you a man who does not have a life. <laughs> Francisco says, number two. Fuck flour, corn, maize, my man. Cinco puntos, you go. Straight down Cesar Chavez, you're there. Five points with the tripas, buche, cabeza, lengua. Tacos, man, fucking huge tacos, man. And the tortas, shit, tortas. And the quesadillas, fuck you. Everything at that place, mwah, all of it. I stick to tacos, tripas, buche, cabeza, lengua. Canitas? Canitas is their speciality. Canitas is, but I always took off tripas, buche, cabeza, lengua, and by the time Canitas comes up, man, I'm full. I'm full, man, and I just never ever even seem to get there. <laughs> Francisco says number three. <laughs> what good is it if you can't wait for it? <laughs> Francisco says, have you met my good friend Ephraim? He's kind of a big deal, you know. My friend Ephraim, Elizabeth King. Ephraim has the kind of name should be Obin Lights. And it will be, you watch. One day you'll see his name high up in the air, bright right over there across the street on the Grand Central Market Theater Marquee. One night only, by popular demand, Ephraim Elizabeth King is. Ephraim Elizabeth King in. An Ephraim Elizabeth King production of Up in Lights. Standing room only. The fire marshal said no, but the people, the people said yes. <laughs> One last poem, and by this point you're looking at me and you're thinking, who is this fill in the blank, and where did he come from? 
I think this poem is self-explanatory, but it also offers a little bit of insight into that question. It might help answer it more than anything I could say, because I would go on for days and years. <clears throat> this poem is entitled Tusk by Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> You must understand, as a kid, I was obsessed with Tusk by Fleetwood Mac. I used to lock myself in my room after soccer and lights off supine on the floor play the record endlessly. Scored by its tunes, I was, in my mind, a fly on the studio walls. In ice-clear crystal visions, I drift from room to room to room to room, singing and writing and playing as it all went down, floating at will like a ghost in a Japanese horror film. <laughs> I could see Stevie Nicks and her 6,000 candles, all of them lit but unattended, soft and melting everywhere. I could smell Christine's English perfume. It was lavender, light. I could almost taste her tea, bitter and black, and feel cold keys on her piano give way to my tentative teenage fingers. And I could watch Lindsay and Mick and John match whiskey to rhythm and cigarettes to beats, etc. And I could see etc. and etc. and etc. and etc. forever. Of course, I'd have to get up and flip the record or the CRO 2 90-minute max of set, depending on the high-fidelity format I chose it. No worries. <laughs> Tusk was Handel's messiah to me. <laughs> Once, I came home from soccer, and my kid brother was in my room. This is black-handed crime enough. But add to it that he stood there grinning like a demon, like little Damien in the omen, 666, yes. <laughs> and all around his little legs and feet, the unspooled brown tape thread of my Fleetwood back tusk tour bootleg recording live from the St. Louis Checker Dome. It was a bootleg I had paid 25 bucks hard-earned teenage cabbage for in the high school cafeteria. So I killed him. <laughs> He's dead now. <laughs> Swiftly I turned, I spun actually, in my own room. To absolutely nobody, like Sting's terrible character in Dune. And I saw, and I roared, I will kill him! And then he was no more. He died on that day because in true Van Halen, fair warning fashion, I struck that poor boy down. I was grounded for it, of course. My mom being cop of the house and all. Grounded, yes, but I killed him and he died, yes, and yes, when he died, he did die a death, baby. Grounded meant locked away in my room, locked away to do nothing but think on my misstep. And also listen to Tufts not stop the suckers. I even took my speakers apart, remade, remodeled, rebuilt, rewired, rebalanced them to maximize my reveries. One year later, I do the same thing again for the album Farewell of the Kings, but don't even get me started on Rush. <laughs> the point is, in the long run, I won. I remember that the next time the tusk hit Sarah and its spiraling vector of a melody gurgles from your stereo and in broad daylight I do seem to drift and drift away, away, deep, deep, deep into a place even as I sit riding next to you in the faux leather comfort of your metallic brown Jetta. <laughs> Hold on. The night is coming. And the starling flew for days. All the time I'd go anywhere. Anywhere. Repeat, <laughs> ask me, and I'm there. <laughs> Repeat. Thank you, I have been, continue to be, and hopefully, and for as long as time will allow, FM Elizabeth King. <laughs>